So, part two coming up, and uh, we'll won't have so much of the fast forward anymore because the the what we have, we, what we be how we be applying the next couple of uh, uh, parts of the painting is going to need a little bit more um, visibility. So I'm not going to speed that up. So remember the, your your reflections. So the colours that are above the shoreline uh, are reflected in the water, but we go, uh, it must be muted ever so slightly. And in this instance, the uh, water that is uh, the reflection that is visible. Um, it does not include the sky above, whereas uh, as you move across to the right, then the sky starts to become um, visible. So we put on that, uh, the uh, blue velvet number three first and then come with a bluish green on top of that and blend it so that it sort of fades away. Yeah, so the fading area there, just apply the pastel very softly. Um, we just w w The idea is just to get the color in, give it a good rub, uh, take all the texture away and then at, at a later stage towards the end of the painting we, we do the final refining and uh, um, as as per the photograph that's there All right so i'm going to, i'm putting on just enough pastels that when i rub it uh, it's going to uh, completely cover the paper okay so try as much as possible just get all the tooth gone uh, and the idea is that not to put too much pastel on so that uh, you're able to work on top of it uh, without having to resort to spraying. Uh, found spraying into water is not always the best uh, um, uh, situation. You just find that the the, uh, the colors just become too, um, how can I say, uh, uh, sharp. Okay, so um, okay, so I want you to see that gradation also that's there. We'll come back later on and put in your um, uh, your the, the, the greens and the yellows uh, just to get that reflected colour in. Okay, so back to our blues green, just enhancing that uh, uh, shoreline that's there. All right, so here we're doing uh, sky color. So the sky above is bound being reflected into that water. Okay, uh, I, 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 you will see that later on in the painting, that little kink that I've got uh, is uh, is not right, uh, but I do correct it later on. Oh, so this this exercise is slightly different. Uh, to the others um, in that these different colors. Uh, we've also taken on a new aspect of uh, those, those pine plantations that are on the other side. Uh, so it's a, a new little aspect that you're also dealing with. Good, so we're going to do those little houses there. I'm not going to do every house that's there and I'm just going to just do a little uh, here and there, uh, just a, a, what do you, what do you call it, just an illusion of a, of a house. Um, that's the house is not what we're talking about. We're talking about uh, the reflection. That's the main part of this whole painting. Yeah, so I don't even worry about the doors or anything like that. Eh? So. Okay, house is a little bit too close to the to the water, so we put a little bit more cinema green light just in front of it, so uh, we push the house back a bit. Yeah, now we start to bring our colors down. So what's above comes down there. So we've already put in the 
uh, blue velvet, uh, blue uh, violet, uh, and now we're putting the greens under there. So you can see my action. It's, it's, it's a, I pull it down. Eh? So that's how we get that uh, reflected look. So the water that we be indicating here is not a mirror image. It is a slight distortion in the in the uh, re reflection itself and uh, so with the result is you don't have that complete uh, uh, image of what is above it there. so the area that we just worked on now the uh, wind would have been slightly less uh, stronger as opposed to the light gray above it right so we're going to do that this close embankment on this side uh, make sure that your reflections are sorted out before you do that because it's kind of get kind of dif difficult doing your reflections and you start to pick up the uh, color on the near bank and that kind of tends to uh, blend mix in with your uh, your water color you we really don't want that eh? so i'm using olive green number three here pressing very hard i'm getting a nice sharp sharp edge on the uh, uh, where the grass is silhouetting against the uh, the water uh, so we'll we'll come back later and we will give you more of a, a distinct uh, uh, effect there so it's just a matter of uh, getting the silhouette working for us again okay so there's my underpainting um, and I go into a cinnabar green uh, to uh, do the highlight color I will acknowledge that my green here is perhaps not quite the same as the one in the photograph uh, and that's due to a lack of that particular color in my pastel palette um, so if you've got that exact green go ahead and use it uh, this is one that's close enough for me um, I'm quite happy with it and then once again the green that we're using here is the same with the houses up on the far shore uh, that also helps us to bind my picture together good we want to work on the those trees either side of of the painting uh, they must be nice and warm and dark uh, as opposed to everything else behind it so we kick off with a burnt umber number three holding my pastel flat on its side and then just using the texture just to give me that leaf effect so I'm pressing, pressing pretty hard and um, and then uh, to get those, those, those tree trunks we just hold the pastel 45 degrees and just um, push it up and that's where you get that tree trunk look to it little bushes there that are silhouetting against there um, i made mine a little bit too solid i actually uh, would have preferred to have had it as in the picture uh, but anyway does the job okay so the picture uh, the tree on the left is going to have quite a lot of highlight in it uh, whereas the one i'm working on now is almost in the shadow side of the tree and uh, it's with the result is that the uh, highlights that we're going to place on on this right hand tree that i'm working on right now uh, will be a lot more subdued okay so and i'm just using texture for texture 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 just skimming my pastel over Right, I'm just toning that uh, tree down now with a bit of olive green, uh, number three, uh, so that it's not dark, dark. So. so we're <coughs> going to put a bit of highlight then on the left hand uh, tree. Uh, the, we're going to use the cinnabar green. Uh, it's not going on like we actually would like it to, so I think we'll probably have to just uh, give that a spray all right still with our cinnabar green just tidying up that little uh, open area there bring just a touch of reflection into the water uh, without messing up my shoreline uh, outline 
Right, you can actually see now the difference in the application of the colour, uh, whereas where before it was sprayed when it had pressed quite hard and it wasn't quite visible. Uh, now we, it's just a matter of touching it there and you are getting that uh, um, nice highlight illustrating those tops of the uh, trees. You can see I'm starting to change my angle. The trees that are directly behind the houses are more on a level, whereas the trees that I'm working on now are on a slope. So remember what I said to you, your shadow is an, art, is an artist's friend. So the shadows and the highlights combined are telling you that those trees are on the slope of the, of the hill. The, the the highlights that we have there are, are somewhat uh, sharp. Uh, what we'll need to do is just to tone those down a little bit later on. But it's just to get that initial uh, pastel in. And then from there on we will change uh, to uh, uh, more warmer colors in the foreground. And we're going to then sort of surround those the little homesteads there with quite nice warm colour so it'll create nice, uh, a nice focal point. Right, just using texture, for just texture, I'm using uh, the blunt edge of the end of my pastel uh, to achieve that what I'm doing there now. So because of the um, difference in the shadows uh, compared to the foreground, in other words, as we're climbing up the hill, uh, those cinnabar green deep uh, shadows that we created there, uh, we're using the same highlight, uh, but because of those, those shadows are just a tad colder, uh, it gives you then that illusion of, of distance. So I've purposely not put this section on fast forward because uh, I want you to observe just exactly the way that I am applying the pastel. Right. So by breaking up the uh, um, shadows that are quite high, uh, we then flatten out the tops of those those trees. Okay. Now you see now I'm moving back into that bush line that's behind there using the same highlight color. So just using my fingertips, I'm actually literally tapping it. Okay, no, there's no rubbing, it's just tapping. I'm just pushing the pastel in where it's at. All right, so we want to preserve those shadows. All right, so just a tapping, you see, it just takes that sharp texture away.
Right. So I just felt that that uh, reflected area there was a bit on the dark side, so softened it with a bit of green on top. It's very important to eradicate any texture. So there I've got a little white pencil, a uh, pastel pencil. Um, and just putting the those white houses in reflection. adding a bit of highlight on the bushes. A bit of gold orca number three. Um, you can see there in the actual photograph there's some little spots of bare sand. Uh, so that's what we're doing there. Just not nothing over the top, just a suggestion there. So where the sunlight is hitting this grass. Um, applying that colour quite sharply, and so the you don't the, the grass is short, so you're not going to have much shadow there, uh, indicating your grass there. Back to the highlights of our tree, and the pastel is not going on like I like I would like it. So we will need to spray this now. Yeah, the, the colour that I'm getting there is just too close to everything around it. Uh, and I want to pull this forward and I'm not succeeding. All right, so um, we will have to just um, take a, a bit of a spray on that there and then it'll actually come out right. <laughs> 